Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being the show, it's about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Supernatural. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. This was an episode full of surprises. I got a lot of stuff I didn't expect. It was so... Okay, so... We're obviously picking off with like things being super dire because it's like they Jack, Sam, and Dean are like the only people left on Earth, it seems like. And it's just obviously the news about Cass as well. You know, Billy's gone, but Cass as well too. He's he, you know, he sacrificed himself to the empty to make sure that they you know, that uh to save him, to save, you know, them, you know, from Billy's wrath, you know. And, you know, that that sinking feeling, you know, it's very like last man on earth type of situation. It's like they are literally the last one. And it didn't even correlate in my head to even think about it until this episode where they point out, like, it's not just them. They're literally on an entire planet to themselves because it's a lifeless man. Because I was wondering, it's like, because I was thinking, like, maybe it'd be a situation where you get rid of all the humans but leave every, like, supernatural being. It's like, no, all the supernatural beings are going. Every animal is going, you know, in the grand scheme of things. It's meant to be a lifeless planet, be- you know. So it's like, what do we, what do we do now, you know? And it just, even to the point Sam's giving up because he's blaming himself. I made the whole point about the fact is that it's kind of on Dean. Dean, like I brought it up last episode about the irony behind it being Dean willing to sacrifice everything and admit killing Chuck and everything's been sacrificed. Uh, and Chuck's still uh, around and kicking. But you have Sam who blames himself because he was the one that was like, no, we can like go against, you know, whatever it is that Chuck has planned. He's like, because I fought against it, he's like, this is my fault to begin with. And obviously, you know, Dean, Dean, you know, I'm sure blames himself just as much, you know, so. But Jack was like, you can't give up. So they meet with Chuck and they're all right, you bring everybody back, we'll do it. I'll kill Sam, Sam will kill me, we'll have the Cain and Abel thing that you always wanted to be. But for Chuck, he's like, hey, it's too late. This is your punishment. You to live on a lifeless planet, like, you know, basically constant sh- internal shame. Because this way, you're constantly living in a world that's empty. A reminder that this is your fault. Because you didn't want to play game. Uh, because, you know, it's like now you want to, you know, because you guys didn't want to take a knee. Now, because of that, all of this happened. So, this is on you living that shame, you know. So, and now, obviously, it's just, once again, the world's empty. Like, well, what do they do? There's no way around this. Um Obviously, we see the continuation of the Chuck, um, the, not Chuck, but the um, Jack situation. And I'm like, what is that? Like, that's why I said last episode, uh, he was like a vacuum, like he was like a black hole of life or something. Which I, I think in the grand scheme of things, I wasn't too far off to a certain extent. Uh, but nevertheless. But then Jack's like, I sent something. They go check it out. Lo and behold, it's a dog. And it's like, oh, how did Chuck miss this? And it's just like, oh. I was like, oh, something bad's going to happen. Something's, I was like, oh, maybe not. I even love it being like, okay, wait, you going to give it shotgun? He's like, no, unless you're okay with it. Because he's like, hell. And he's even deeming like, you're lucky. He's lucky I don't just basically kick him out of his room and give it to you. Something of that nature. And it's like, it's like oh, this, is, this isn't going to end in the dog disappears and Chuck's literally in a field nearby looking at him like hey it was meant to be like hey find this extra bit of life either he he had to have done it on purpose to be like oh, oh you thought there was something else up there <laughs> nope it's just you guys again or maybe he there's no way him being kind of able to see and know everything the way he does I mean obviously there are things that obviously he doesn't know but I was like come on dude I was like, that was the biggest middle finger. But then, like, they go to a church, and lo and behold, who did they run into? It was like Michael. I was like, I didn't see that coming. It's like, well, they did try to get in contact with him, but that is the thing of like them talking about it. It's like you, we called to you, and you didn't come. He was like, yeah, that was then. This is now. I think it's because like, yeah, he turned against Chuck before, but it's like, eh. I mean, he went out of his way to hide because he knew, like, oh, dad would be pissed because I started with the Winchesters. But for him, it's just like, you know, now's now. So they try to use him. It's like, hey, only death can read the book, but maybe an archangel can pop it open. My mind starts flaring up because I'm like, whoa, Jack is sucking up life. I'm like, is he, did he become death or something? That's what I was thinking. I thought that's the direction we're going because I was like, so could Jack read the book? That's what I was, I was like, is that where we're going with this? And so in the grand scheme of things, it turns out, well... That's, um, well, the Archangel angle doesn't work, and it's like, well, what do we do now? And then, you know, they get a call from Cass. I was like, oh, this is God messing with you. There's no way it's Cass. And lo and behold, who the hell is it? Lucifer. I was like, what? What? I was like, no way. I was like, that's crazy. 
I did not expect this scene. He's like, I know we kind of had our issues in the past, guys, but come on, we should work together. He's saying, like, the empty. It's like, ah, you kind of don't, you know, go against the empty. You know, it's kind of, you know, pretty pissed. You know, Jack blowing up in it, in it and everything, after, you know, it killing Billy. So it's like, hey, it sent me out here to help you guys. It's like, come on, guys. Come on, we're working together. We're a team again, guys. Come on. This would be, you know, and I'm like, ugh. Because that's just, a, that's the thing. Because I, the actor who plays Lucifer, I adore him so much in a role. Because Lucifer's always had these ups and downs because it's like, oh, you're an asshole. You've done some shitty stuff. But he's so charismatic, you know. And like, not not the same as, you know, um, obviously Mark and uh, Tom, you know, Tom um, Ellis. And um, I always forget Mark. It's, it's something with a P. Is it? Uh, Peregrino, some, I know I'm going to butcher it, so, but like Mark and Tom's Lucifers, obviously, you know, Tom Ellis playing Lucifer from the TV show Lucifer are very different Lucifers, they certain overlaps in their, their, their characters, their, their portrayals of the character, but it's still just a situation of, um, you, like I said, he's just that character you love to hate, you're like, ooh, you do such dastardly stuff, but then you, you come off a little charismatic, it's, it's the same way with, um, with, the uh, oh, God, Crowley. Crowley was literally the same way. He would do some dastardly shit, but in a moment she'd be like, oh, I love you, Crowley. Like, it's it's that love-hate relationship. Um, but I was like, wow. I didn't expect that. Um, and then he's like, alright, so, he's like, it's not just me, I got a surprise. And the lady pops up and I'm like, I was like, wait, am I supposed to, who? I'm like, who, who the hell is that? Am I, am I supposed to know who that is? And then they say, who is she? I'm like, oh, okay, so it's not just me. And it's like, oh, this is Kelly. She's a reaper. And I'm like, oh. And they're kind of slow in the upkeep. It's like, he's like, watch this. And he stabs her. And in that moment, I was like, no, 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 no. It's not going to work because technically Jack's become the next death. That's what I thought was going to happen. So I didn't think it was going to work. But lo and behold, it did work. I was like, oh. So I was like, at that moment, I was like, I must be completely wrong about the Jack situation. But then like Kelly's just kind of like, whoa. She's like, all right, time for me to open the book and everything. And they're just kind of like, she's like, oh, they are kind of so slow in the upkeep, keep, aren't they? And it's like, oh, this isn't a group project. I'm going to handle this myself. I love the whole thing. Like, you've literally been dead for an hour, and yet, like, you have it all figured out. Um, but Kelly's like, yeah, we have the grand plan. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right this is going to be it. I was like, I thought Chuck was going to show up or do something. It's like, oh, no, Lucifer's going to do it because he's a two-faced bastard he's always been. So he kills Kelly, takes a book. Actually, it wasn't the empty that led me out. It was good old dad. And then he's um, looking at Michael talking about, oh, isn't it great that you were the fa You always did everything you could for dad. You know, it's actually interesting because Michael, I meant to bring this up because I thought it was so fascinating. Michael's actually the one who, like, basically created religion because he's the one that was like, oh, I gathered, like, the angels and, like, the prophets to create miracles. Like, when when his when their dad disappeared he's the one that kept it you know like basically made the world believe in a loving and caring god you know but obviously you know it's like oh like you know i'm the, uh, lucifer's like i'm the new favorite which is so interesting that you would side with your dad considering you've always hated your dad you've gone toe to toe with your dad i mean on in some occasions in the past you've actually joined forces i think during the whole Mars situation you joined forces but it was still just a why would you to be fair he got you out of the empty you know, I'm sure that that swayed the corner a little bit. But also, since your dad's on, like, a very, like, destroy everything type of situation, I guess you're just kind of like, I'm going to be on the winning side of things. Yeah, me and dad have had beef, but yeah, I'm on the winning side of things. Also, it means giving Michael the middle finger. It's also about making Michael the cuck, which is so interesting. The reason why I'm bringing this whole, it, I think it's so interesting because obviously, you know, Eric... Uh, who's Kripke, who's, you know, behind this show, also behind the boys. There's the whole thing about cucking in um, the boys with the whole lamplighter and um, Huey conversation. So it's that, it's that type of, uh, you know, it just immediately made me think of that. I was like, oh, but it's like, you know, Lucifer being able to give the middle finger to Michael to be like, oh, I, I'm actually, I'm best son. I'm favorite son now. Just, doesn't that piss you off, bro? So now, you know, asking Jack, like, hey, uh, I want to be on the winning side of things now, champ. You know, it's like, oh, I mean, well, to be fair, it's not like he has the best relationship with you. So I was expecting him to come up and, like, accidentally killing Lucifer again. Uh, but no, it uh, didn't work out that way because Michael's the one that killed him. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And it's like, oh, which I guess that was the whole point, too, because it's like Michael and Lucifer in front of him. Because we also learned about what happened to Abel. Um, Abel got 
No, not Abel. Adam. Adam got it hard, apparently, just because, you know, like, because obviously him and Michael were working together with this plan and everything. Um, but nevertheless, tangents and all that. Um, when it was all said and done, though, it's kind of like, well, that, oh, that's the end of Lucifer. I was like, wow, I didn't expect that to play out the way it did. Okay, I I guess it played out the way it did. So I was like, okay, so where's this going to go now? Now it's a situation of like, you know, it, well, they, you know, it's like, well, we have to read the book to find out, you know, what the spell is. It, we'll figure out what this whole ending for Chuck is because the book is open now. So when it was all said and done, you know, there's a conversation. And I think it's interesting that the conversation is, you know, Dean and Michael, because obviously, let's not forget, Dean was Michael's original, well, perfect vessel and everything. You know, so for them to have the conversations about like, you know, it's like obviously for Michael, he's taking it hard that oh, my dad would turn to him. And it's like, oh, did you want him to turn to you? He's like, no. And the moment he's saying no, you're like, yeah, you did. You son of a gun. Despite everything, he's done. You wanted to, you wanted to be daddy's little boy. You wanted dad to turn to you like, no, I'm your special. I'm your special boy. I'm, I'm, I'm the better one. I'm good. I mean, to be fair, Michael's dedicated himself so much to their dad, that is like, of course, like, it's going to be hard to kind of break that complicated, you know, situation. But regardless, like I said, tangents and all that. Um, it's like, all right, Sam is able to read a little bit of it. It's like, all right, we're going to cast a spell because uh, everyone was doing research. And I'm like, all right, it's supposed to be something that finds Chuck and eliminate. I'm like, is this actually going to work? Oh, no. Lo and behold, uh, Michael betrayed them. It's like, oh, he's like, see, I'm, ser I'm it was always my destiny to serve you, Father. He's like, yeah, but you did work with the Winchester. He's like, yeah, it was a lapse in judgment, silence, and he proceeded to kill Michael. Very brutally, in fact. Kind of reminds you of when, uh, it's not the same, but it kind of reminded me of when, um, when, uh, Jack ended up killing, uh, Michael. And so, it was actually pretty brutal seeing him kind of, like, basically explode like that. I was like, oh, that... That sucked. And then it's just kind of like, well, that was your last trump card. And so for him, it's just kind of, you know, he's not satisfied with it. He's like, and I love him being like, uh, it's, it's just kind of a boring ending. Just letting you just kind of live out. He's like, so officially, guys, you've been canceled. And I'm like, I love the fourth wall breaking. I love that's always been a thing about Chuck where he just references it to be the TV show that it is. But it is, you know. Which is always interesting considering the fact is the show has fourth wall wall broken itself to be like, oh, obviously because Chuck made Supernatural in this world. And then also there was some reality, you know, when they broke the reality, it's like, oh my God, wait, we're actually a TV show? I'm some dude named Jared Padalecki and you're some dude named Jensen Ack. What? Like, don't, hands down, probably one of my, like, those are some of my favorite episodes, especially like all the stuff with Gabriel when he like, like, you know, when he was pretending to be Loki and everything, but even then, like, when he'd alter reality to fuck with them, I love, those are always my favorite episodes, but the fact of the matter is, it's like, despite everything, you know, Chuck's like, you know what, I'm not gonna make this quick for you, he's not Thanos, Thanosing them, like, snap it, it's like, no, I'm actually gonna get my hands dirty, starts wailing on them, telling them to stay down, but they refuse to, and they keep getting up, and he's just like, why won't you stay down, and they're laughing, he's like, what are you laughing about, he's like, oh, you lost, and he's like, what, and then Jack's over there, like, nothing, he's like, oh, Jack, all right, fine, snaps, nothing, I'm like, oh, and then, like, Jack grabs him and does some shit. You're like, wait, what's going on? I was like, because I thought, I was like, oh, Jack is about to kill you. We still don't fully know what that situation, his situation is. But it turns out, nope, we know exactly what his situation is because Sam and Dean planned for this. But then it turns out they had this grand elaborate plan because they knew, like, there's no way Michael's not going to betray us because of the way he acted with the whole Lucifer thing. They knew, like, oh, he's always going to be daddy's little boy. Like, he's going to ultimately betray us if it means getting back on Chuck's good side. So they knew that was coming. But they also realized beforehand, they were like, Chuck, I mean, not Chuck, but um, Jack has been absorbing power this entire time. That's what that situation is. So not necessarily absorbing life, but just power in general. So as Michael and... Um, Lucifer were going back and forth. He was drawing up more power. So, but they knew they had to draw Chuck out. So they came up with this like, oh, it's a spell. It was a lie. It was just so they knew Michael would betray them. And obviously Chuck would come to gloat and everything. So it drew him out and everything. And you're like, oh, dude. 
So, and the entire time, that's why they let Chuck beat the shit out of him. Because every blow was him releasing more of that god power. And Jack's been mm, sucking it up the entire time. So now Chuck is, ba now Jack is basically the new god. And I was like, huh. So interesting how that ended up being the case. I, I had a feeling that's where it was going to go, like, since the beginning. Like, I always felt like that was going to be the plan to make him the next god or something. It's interesting how that does finally end up playing out, but he basically took away what made Chuck, you know, Chuck. And I thought it was so interesting because he's like, wow, Chuck was actually happy. He's like, this is why you guys are my favorites. I was like, holy, that's twisted. So for him, he's like, I can, you know, I'm supposed to be able to see everything. But for him, it's like, I could never see an ending where I could law would lose because they could never re it makes you wonder what was the plan? Like, did they miraculously end up going down the side? Like, it makes you wonder. And that's the thing. We will never know. And I think maybe that's just a mystery they have in the created in the show to be like, Makes you wonder, what was the original... Because that's the thing I'm wondering, like, did they have multiple ideas of how they wanted this whole thing with Chuck to play out? So they gave you, like, there is a clear-cut way for this to end, but you as the audience will never know. Because maybe they had multiple ideas and they could never settle on one, and so to keep the mystery alive, of like, what would have been the original way Chuck would have went down? Or is this fate? Is this destiny? Was this way of it playing out actually how it was supposed to play out? Was it always going to play out like this? They got there on their own without guidance, but that basically, as Thanos would say, inevitable. You know, makes you wonder. You know, but maybe I think maybe the whole point would be not to follow the book because the whole point is just to go out and that's the whole reason from getting underneath Chuck so that everything isn't predetermined that you get to live your life. I mean, but it's else it's death, so it's it's kind it's inevitable. It is set in stone. You know, I mean, I mean, well. Who the hell am I to say that in this universe, considering the fact is they've always broken the rules when it comes... I mean, to be fair, it was other celestial beings that kind of broken, broke the rules for them when it came to life and death. It's, you get what I'm trying to say, like... So, I don't know. It's just... It's interesting. And now the thing is, like, for him, it's like, okay, so you guys will kill me. And they're like... You know, it's like, you get to die by Sam Winchester's hand, Dean Winchester's hand, the ultimate killer. And he's like, no... That's not who I am, you know, and they walk away. They don't kill Chuck. It's like, that's what Dean wanted more than anything, but it's like, you know, it's what um, Cassio said to him. I'm sure that resonated with him being like, I know I don't have to see myself the way other people, like some people see me. Like, that's how I view myself. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm this monster. I'm my dad's blunt weapons. Like, that's not who I am. That's who you want me to be. That's how you wrote me to be. But it's like, that's not who I am. I'm more than that, you know? And so it's like, he won't get his powers back, right? It's like, no, they're not his anymore. So they leave. And he's seeing Chuck. Because obviously he's always played. Obviously it's because it's always been part of his story to be all like, oh no. Like, you know, during the whole Amara thing, you saw him kind of a little scrapey and scared. And obviously when he's playing Chuck, he was being a little, you know, uh, skittish. But like to see him so weak and just kind of like, guys, come, no, don't. Because now it's like, you're going to live like every human. The humans that you turned against, the humans you forgot, they'll forget about you. You know, they won't pray to you. They won't know about you. You'll just be lost and forgotten. You'll just be, just grow old, get sick and die. You know, you won't be remembered. You know, because he feeds off that attention. So without it, you know. But now, you know, Jack ends up restoring life all across the board. We even see the dog and everything. So it's like everyone's back is like, hell yeah. But um, it's like, all right, let's go back to the bunker and everything. Yeah, we're going to get you a nice setup, but Jack's not coming back. Uh, he also points out, like, Amara's with him. It's like, they're in perfect harmony now. And I was like, I'm glad to know that, like, she's there, you know? Would have liked to have been able to see her. But I, I like that it's, like, you know, kind of what Amara wanted beforehand. And I think it's almost beautiful because they both had their complicated relationship with Dean. For them to be kind of one, I think, it makes a lot of sense. But, um... For Jack, he's like, I can't come back. Like, it, obviously, he is the new guy, but for him, he's like, I'm me. I, but I get what you mean. But he's like, he's like, I'm going to be basically the whole thing, the whole thing that Adam had told him. It's like, yeah, God's supposed to be in everything. He's supposed to be. And I guess in a way, Jack is because he basically helped bring everyone back. So maybe a little bit of him is in everything now, everything living. He's like, but he's even like, I'm in the wind. I'm in the, you know, but for him, it's like, the difference between me and Chuck, he's like, I learned from him. It's like that, you know, the, Chuck made the mistake of putting himself in his own story. And he's like, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to be hands off. You know, for him, it's going to be a situation of, 
I learned from you guys that when given the opportunity to be their best, humanity can rise to that occasion. So he's trusting humanity to be the best. But he's like, you know, because um, they were just like, what if we want to, you know, get a beer sometime and stuff like that. So, it's just, But it's just going to be him like, I'm not asking people to pray to me or to um, – or to uh, sacrifice to me. It's like, I want them to basically have faith in themselves. Don't have faith in me. Just have faith in themselves. Believe in themselves. Believe in that. Believe in being the best that they can be, you know? And, you know, saying goodbye, you know? And it's just like, wow. You know, to see his story come this full circle, you know, because of, uh, you know, because of his mom, because of Sam, because of Dean, because of Castiel, you know? And so... That's where things, you know, kind of end, and it's just like, you know, it's kind of quiet in the bunker now. There's, there's no cast, no uh, Jack, but it's like, you know, now they have their freedom. Like, for the first time, their lives are theirs to decide, like, what they do next. And to me, I'm looking at this like, this is episode 19. This this isn't even the series finale, yet this feels like a series finale. And then I start thinking, this might end like Arrow did. I mean, truth be told is, Arrow's story kind of finished up. The moment Crisis on Infinite Earths ended, but then like Arrow had two more episodes, and obviously one was kind of set up for you know potentially a spin off for Arrow, but also um, potentially that, and also the whole um, final episode was just a lot of it was mainly a closure episode. So this felt like a lot of closure, but there's still I'm curious to see what you're gonna do with the series finale. It's mainly gonna be closure. I know that's what it's gonna be. But I'm still curious to see what it's going to be. Because even at the end of this, it's like, what are we getting? Flashes of the entire series. I'm like, that seems like something you say for the final episode. But I'm like, we're doing that in the penultimate episode. So it's like, what the hell will actually go down in the final episode is what I'm curious about, you know? And once again, I didn't get the answers I wanted. Like, when every life form was dealt with, it's like, well, does that include... I mean, you'd assume it include every angel and demon, so that means hell probably got taken care of. Like, like, that's what I'm wondering about. Like, we never got answers to that and probably never will. But I just, I want some more, I'm like, who, who are we going to see in the end? Like, what are going to, you know, are we going to see Rowena one last time? You know, are they going to fix, deal with the whole Cassio and um, the empty situation? Like, is there any dealing with that? Like, maybe Jack makes a decision to deal with, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he pops in to see uh, Cassiel in the empty, I, I don't know, and maybe, you know, Cassiel's happy being like, oh, it's, you, you did it, you saved, you saved everything, I mean, what about those other worlds, I, I, I mean, they're gone, so, like, I don't know if there's any repairing that, but, I mean, hell, maybe Jack goes off, makes other worlds, maybe he's able to bring them back, because we know he brought everyone on this world back, but maybe there was that restoring life and basically recreating entire worlds, maybe that's not plausible, maybe it is, I don't know, I mean, you don't know what, what he's capable of now, I mean, he is basically the new well, God, a lot of questions probably won't get answered. I'm fine with that, but I'm just like, Sam, I'm so curious because the next episode is, in fact, the series finale. Um, I am watched this on the CW app, so I don't, because I know there's like supposed to be like a, kind of like how before Arrow's final episode, there was just kind of like a look back on everything type of special. So I think, I know, I think there's one for Supernatural that's going to air next week. So I don't know what they're like. There's not going to be an episode of the Outpost next week. And it's just going to be that special for the super, for Supernatural and also the series finale. I think that's probably going to be how that works. Maybe, maybe not. Like I said, I, I don't know. I'll probably end up looking it up afterwards. Or maybe, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just be surprised, you know, when next week rolls around. We'll see. But um, I'm interested to see how this comes to a close, you know? I mean, even though it kind of already has, but you know, Sam and Dean riding off, not necessarily into the sunset, but, you know, new, you know, life breathed into their lives because it's like our lives are now ours to make the choice. And, you know, like I said, see where this ends up taking us, you know, probably might get some time skips in because I've talked about that, like how a lot of series finales end with time skips. I mean, like I Zombie, for example, ended with a time skip, you know, so maybe we'll kind of get that in. You know, we'll, like I said, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.